This is the Hoka Zanal, a shoe that I've been loving in everything from fast downhill descents to a 50k ultra. So how has it been holding up? It's time to talk about the Zanal after 100 miles. Nine point zero miles, eight minutes, 53 seconds per mile, and a little bit more than 1,100 feet of vertical gain over the course of this run going through Pikes Peak State Park in Northern Iowa. A great way to round out my testing of the Hoka Zanal. Now, before I give you my thoughts on this shoe after 100 miles, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Hoka sent to me for the purpose of review. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Hoka Zanal after 100 miles. First, let's go over some specs on this shoe. This is a 22 millimeter stack height shoe in the heel with a four millimeter drop giving us 18 millimeters of pro fly midsole that is a dual foam system where there's a firm and responsive foam on the lower layer and a softer foam for the upper layer giving you kind of the best of both worlds where you're getting a little bit of cushion but you're still getting a nice peppy ride as far as I know, there is no rock plate in this shoe, but from my testing, at least on the terrain that I've been on in this shoe, and I've been on a pretty wide range of terrain from loose, sharp rocks all the way down to buffed out dirt roads, I haven't felt like it needed a rock plate at all because that outer layer of that profile is pretty dense and has been able to protect my foot from feeling any sharp rocks underfoot. As far as the outsole goes, they're using V-Rim Light Base, which is their lighter outsole material. They're just supposed to still provide just as much grip, but just with a lot less rubber. It still has four millimeter lugs that I found to be surprisingly grippy. On the upper, it's a very breathable upper. It's not waterproof. It's designed to let air and water in and also let that water drain out. They do have some TPU overlays along the toe cap, but there's no other protective features up in the toe. But the way that the midsole is designed, anytime I've accidentally kicked something in the shoe, whether it's a rock or a root, I've been kicking it and hitting it with the midsole and the lack of like a structured toe cap hasn't been a problem for me. Moving to the midfoot, the tongue is nice and minimal, pretty much stays out of the way, just a bare piece of mesh with a little bit of TPU overlay on top. And then moving into the heel cup, there is a little bit of structure in here, but not a lot. It's pretty floppy with only a very small amount of padding, which I think fits with the intended use case for this shoe. All this comes together at a relatively lightweight of 8.5 ounces or 242 grams. So now let's talk about what it's been like to run in the shoe. Now I've used this shoe in a variety of places. One of the first places that I really got to kind of put it through its paces was when I went out to film Western States. Uh, the day before the race started, I got to run up the mountain a little bit and do a little bit of uphill running, but also a lot of super fun downhill running. And that was just an absolute blast. I was a little bit worried that the lack of like super gnarly lugs on the bottom of the shoe would be a bit of a problem, but I didn't have to worry about it at all because of the fact that I think that this light base V-Rim outsole does really work well, in, especially in a situation where you're moving your feet really quickly and you're trying to really just dance down the mountain rather than trying to like trudge through a bunch of muddy slippery wet conditions uh, for the conditions that I saw out in California it was absolutely fine I also raced my first 50k in the shoe and that race didn't have the biggest most difficult climbs but there was a decent amount at least for me of uphill and downhill and in ways that I thought were relatively technical and again the shoe did really well even in a very different type of terrain that is in northern Iowa. I also raced a, a trail half marathon in these and I feel like that's pretty much like the exact spot that I like them. I love this shoe from like the trail half marathon towards maybe like closer to the trail marathon. I think that's kind of the sweet spot for the shoe and that's because of the way they set up the pro 
fly on this shoe. I think that Hoka has been trying to call this as like a trail Mach 4, which I could see why they'd want to call it that, but I don't feel like it's that at all. I feel like this is a little bit more firm of a ride. I think that when you look at the Profly midsole and kind of like the two tones, there's a lot more of that stiffer uh, material on the outsole part. And there's a lot less of the cushioned material that's directly underfoot. Uh, and I think in the Mach 4, it's a little bit reversed. But ultimately, I think that that really works for what this shoe is trying to be. It's supposed to be a little bit of a trail racer, something that you're supposed to use for those shorter, faster days where you're really trying to move your feet quickly rather than being out there for really long runs. I think that the 50K race that I did, and it was probably a little bit long to be in the Zanal. But ultimately, every word that I've had this shoe, I've just really enjoyed running in it. But with all the terrain that I've been running on, what has been the wear and tear been like on this shoe? I'm looking at it and at least from the upper perspective, it looks like it's a shoe that's gotten a little bit of attention. It looks like it's been loved and it definitely has been. It got discolored really quick. That's really the only thing that's happening with this upper in terms of wear and tear. It is starting to kind of mold and shape itself a little bit to the shape of my foot, but it's certainly not stretching or anything like that. So if it was a little bit tight when you first got the shoe, it's probably going to stay that way uh, so you want to make sure you're getting a good fit right out of the box and it's just going to get to be even better over time and that's what i've been experiencing moving to that outsole i feel like there is a decent amount of wear that i'm seeing for 100 miles uh, and i'm starting to see it like kind of on the edge the perimeter of the shoe and that's where some of the lugs here are showing a little bit more wear all of the lugs kind of had almost like a, it looked like an A or maybe like an arrowhead type of pattern, but you're starting to see a lot of that like detail wearing away from some of these peripheral lugs that are on the sides of the shoe, like on the outside of the left and right shoe. Um, but overall, it's still a super grippy shoe and definitely can handle anything that I can throw at it. I'm not the most uh, advanced and technical of trail runners, but for anywhere that I've gone and everything I've, I've asked of this shoe to do, I feel like it's risen to the task. As far as the midsole goes, it still feels like it's a little bit of a stiff shoe to run in. If you're used to super cushioned all day wear type of trail shoes, this is certainly going to be a little bit of adjustment. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more responsive, a little bit more firm so that you can keep moving a little bit quicker along the trails, then I think that this is exactly the kind of shoe that you should be looking at and for me so i feel like the pro fly midsole foam while it's starting to show some creases and some signs of wear especially on some of the exposed portions of the shoe uh in terms of performance it's holding up fantastically so overall I'm very impressed with the hokas and all this being an inaugural year a rookie year for this shoe i feel like hokas done a really good job of this and i especially enjoy that they're paying attention to some of these shorter trail distances uh the trail ultras are fine I I love them. I want to do more of them, but I also really just want to be able to do more frequent racing and have a lot of fun in my trail shoes going a little bit faster or trying to find some more technical uh, routes for me to run in. And I think shoes like this, I think are going to be really exciting in the space as another option, a different kind of shoe for a different type of run or a different type of terrain that I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes in the future. If you have any other questions about the Hoka's and all, feel free to put them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?